Are you ready to go to work? Turn to somebody and say, new season, new you. Oh, come on, tell them like you mean it. New season, new you. What if, what if your life has been a struggle, a battle, you've gone through more battles than you deserve, more valleys than you deserve, more challenges than you deserve, and you have said in the recent past, it shouldn't be this way. It should not be so hard. I'm ready for something different. I'm ready for a breakthrough. I'm ready for a change. Anybody, anybody ever felt that way? Well, what if the God of the universe were to send his son to this earth to change everything? What if, he, what if the Bible is really true and God did send his son so that everything would change, so that you could walk in a new season, so you could experience and everybody around you could experience a new you? Anybody ever told you you need to change? So anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, this is 2016, 2016. And 16 in the Bible is the number of love. The foundation is found in a favorite verse in John 3, 16. that simply says, for God so loved this world that he sent his only son so that you and I could have everlasting life. He loved us so much. And I really believe that 2016 is different. It's already different. You are going to be so overwhelmed with the love of God this year. Your life is going to be so full of God's love. And you're going to share that love with others. And when you sow, you also reap. You're going to receive love. It's going to be a year like you've never lived before. It is a new season. It is a new you. And 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person anyone who belongs to Christ does anybody here belong to Christ let me see your hand anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person the old life is gone a new life a new season has begun it's here and I heard what you said somebody said well I've been a Christian a long time and I've still had these battles these valleys these struggles these challenges well, that's not surprising. The Bible says that man that is born of woman, anybody here got a mama? If you have a mama, you were born of woman, and man that is born of woman is of a few days, and the Bible says, full of trouble. But here's the good news. You are a problem solver. God has anointed you to overcome and he sent his son to transform your life so that you would walk in the favor of the blessings, the increase of God. And this is the year it's going to manifest like never before. I believe that. I really believe that. This is the year, new season, new you. And we're going to look at some foundational scriptures. How many have been on the Daniel fast or you've been on a fast of some kind? Today is the last day, the 21st day. Amen. I've already heard a rumor that some of you were going to Five Guys for the biggest, greasiest hamburger, cheeseburger that you can get. And a blizzard after. You don't need a blizzard. We've already had the winter blizzard of 2016. So some of you have been on a fast with us. We have done a 21-day fast and prayer. And if you haven't prayed during this fast, you've only been on a diet. I hope you've been praying and fasting. And as we also often teach, if you pray and you fast and you give, it's a threefold cord that is not easily broken. So during these 21 days, I believe that God has done something supernatural in the spirit realm because we live in a spirit realm. And in Daniel chapter 10, we're going to look at the foundation. Uh, as you begin to read in Daniel chapter 10, verse 2, he starts off and says, I, Daniel, fasted three full weeks, 21 full days. He says he ate no, no bread, no sweets, no meat during those three weeks. And that's what, what we call the Daniel fast. No bread, no sweets, no meat. And for 21 days, he's fasting and he's praying. 
And then the angel of the Lord showed up and touched him. And, of course, it scared him. Most of you are very spiritual. I understand if you have conversations with angels on a regular basis. But if an angel touched me and I woke up and looked and here's an angel, it probably scared me to death. Probably not as spiritual as you are, but it would probably get my attention, as it did for Daniel. But as he reads on, as you read on, verse 4 of chapter 10 says this. I, Daniel, on the first month, the 24th day, what, what month is this? First month. Read it in Daniel chapter 10, verse 4, 2, 3, and 4. Verse 4 says, on the first month, the 24th day, God showed up. What if on this first month, on this 24th day, what if everything that you have experienced up to this point in your life changes? What if this is the day, what if this is the year for a new season and a new you? And this angel touched him. The Bible says that he ate no pleasant bread for 21 days. He began this fast on the third day. Our fast began on January the 3rd. Daniel ended his fast on the 24th day. We are ending our fast on the 24th day. And the angel told him his words were heard the first day he prayed. The first day he prayed. Watch this. Not only were they heard the first day he prayed... At the end of those 21 days, the angel came and showed up and said, Your prayers were heard, and I am here because of your words. I am here because of your prayer. Let me tell you something. Have you been praying? God is here. And I want to show you from, from this passage of Scripture in Daniel chapter 10 how you are going to walk in a new season and how everybody around you is going to experience a new you. It's going to happen. It's already started. And here's the process. First of all, it's a new season and there is a new you because you have God's presence. I know sometimes people walk through life. You can be in a crowded room like this and feel like you're all alone. But never again are you going to feel alone because you have the presence of the almighty God in you, with you, wherever you go. One verse said it like this. He's above me, beneath me, beside me, in front of me, behind me, and I know that he lives in me. You have the presence of God. So you don't have to worry about being alone or feeling alone anymore. God is with you. And in Daniel 10, verse 10 and 11, it says, A hand touched me. I need to tell you, God's hand is touching you right now. When that happened, Daniel said, I got on my hands and knees. I was so afraid that I was shaking. And the man in the vision said to me, Daniel, God loves you very much. Think very carefully about the words that I will speak to you. Stand up. I have been sent to you. I have been sent to you. And when he said this, I stood up. I was still shaking because I was afraid. And most of us would feel that way. But God sent his, his spirit. He sent an angel to Daniel and he touched him. And God will send an angel to you. And his presence is with us all the time. We have his presence. In Hebrews 13, 5, we have this promise. God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. Does that help anybody? Yes. To know that no matter where you are in life, no matter what you go through, you have the presence of God. He is with us. You're not alone. You don't ever have to feel alone ever again. We have his presence. It's a new season. It's a new you because you have his promise. The Bible is full of promises. He's made promises to us. You've prayed and talked to him and asked him for things. And he has promised that those things will come to pass. Let me show you. In Daniel 10 verse 12, then he continued. Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God. Your words were heard and I have come in response to them. What a promise to know that when we pray, God will come in response to your prayers, to your words. 
Makes you want to pray, doesn't it? So God will show up, and he will. And then in Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, Take delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart or your heart's desires. What a promise to know that the things that you have in your heart that you want to see, that you want to do, things for your family, things for your children, things for your ministry, those things God will give you the desires that you have in your heart. So we have his presence. We have his promise. And then it's a new season and a new you because you have his peace. Have you ever been in turmoil? Anybody? Am I talking to the right crowd? Anybody here, you've ever been in turmoil? You've ever been in trouble? You've ever dealt with some things that you thought, how can I get through these things? How will I make it through this battle, this struggle, this time, this challenge? Some of you have gone through some things that you did not deserve. You have battled some things that were not your fault. And you wondered, how will I ever get through? But you got through and you will get through because you have his peace. In Daniel 10, verse 18 and 19, Then the one who looked like a man touched me again. And I felt my strength returning. Oh, somebody needs to get this in your spirit. When God touches you, maybe you have felt depleted and you felt like your strength was gone and you felt like you could not make it through the storm that you were going through. But when he touched him again, he said, I felt my strength returning. Don't be afraid, he said, for you are very precious to God. Peace. Peace. I don't know about you, but there have been times that I needed some peace. And I'm talking about the God of the universe speaking peace there is no storm that is so great that God can't give you peace in the middle of the storm there is no trouble that you can go through there is no battle that you can battle there is no struggle that you will face except God is able to give you peace in the midst of that storm when the storm was raging with the disciples and Jesus on the Sea of Galilee the Bible says he walked on the water He came to them in the storm, walking on the water. And just to prove that we can have the same kind of faith, he told Peter, get out and come to me. Peter said, if it's you, let me come. And Peter got out of the boat, a human being. He got out of the boat and he walked on the water. You know, Peter gets a lot of criticism. He denied Christ. He gets a lot of criticism because he is so spontaneous. And, you know, he, he, his personality was, he was all in or all out. But when you evaluate all the other disciples and all the other men and women of God that were great men and women of faith, Simon Peter is the only other one that walked on the water. So I give him some accolades today. Amen? You have peace with him. And in John 14, Jesus said it like this. I love this verse because this is Jesus talking. He says, I leave you peace. You can have a new season. It can be a new you because God is giving you peace. Jesus said, I leave you peace. It is my peace, my own peace I give you. I give you peace in a different way than the world does. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. No more sleepless nights. No more crying yourself to sleep. No more feeling like nobody loves you. Let me tell you, we celebrate who you are at Metro Tab. I've said since this, the inception of this church, go where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. We celebrate you. We celebrate your gifts. We celebrate your diversity. We celebrate who you are because you are made in the image of an almighty God and he has a plan for your life. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. Have peace. It's a new season. It's a new you because you also have his power. Wow. The God that created the universe has given us power. And we need power. We need his presence. We do. We need his promises. We need his peace. But I need his power. And in Daniel 10 verse 19, he said, don't be afraid. He said, for you are very precious to God. Peace, be encouraged, be strong. 2016, you're going to be stronger than you've ever been. You're going to have more determination, more discipline than you've ever been. 
You're going to be able to say no when you need to say no. You're going to be able to say yes when you need to say yes. In 2016, you're going to be stronger than you have ever been before. Strength is coming. You say, well, how do you know, Pastor? Because as he spoke these words to me, I suddenly felt stronger. He said, and he said to him, please speak to me, my Lord. You have strengthened me. And then in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will receive power... When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. God has re released his power to you on planet earth. Let me translate. You will be witnesses telling people everywhere about him in Chattanooga, in Hamilton County, in Tennessee, in this southeast region, in the United States, and all over the world. God will use you like never before. In 2016, you have his power. And then you're going to love this one. It's a new season. It's a new you because you have his provision. The word provision, if you break it down, it's pro and it's vision. Provision means that God is for. He's an advocate for you for the vision that he has deposited in you. He is pro-vision. Can I tell you, the spirit of lack is broken. You say, well, pastor, how do you know? Because it always starts at the head. The Bible says that they poured the anointing oil on the head of Aaron and it ran down his beard and on his shoulders and on his garment. And when God does something in somebody's life, it starts at the head and it comes down. And in 2015, we had a breakthrough financially at Metro Tab. The recession that came in 2008 that plagued churches all across the country. Thousands of churches went out of business because they couldn't pay their payment or their mortgage or they couldn't pay the bills. Our lending institution, our representative came to us two years ago and he told me, he said that year there were something like 83 churches that they had to foreclose on. And in almost 100 years, 90 plus years the organization had been in business, they had never foreclosed on one. And they foreclosed on hundreds of churches in the last five or six years. But because you stepped up to the plate in 2015 and you took the 90-day challenge and you begin to tithe, God not only brought the breakthrough here, the breakthrough is on you. And it's a new season because you have his provision in 2016. I'm not just trying to put a suggestion in your mind. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Daniel 1.9 says, Now God has brought Daniel, in, or had brought Daniel into favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And if you read the entire passage, you'll find out that when Daniel showed up, the king said to him, I have heard of you. Are you that Daniel? Could I tell you today, God has anointed you and touched you and granted favor to you in such a way that people are going to say, I've heard of you. Are you that person? Are you that Metro Tab? Are you that child of God? I've heard of you because the anointing of God is so great on your life. In Proverbs 8, 35, it says, for whoever, whoever finds me, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. You have his provision. Have you found him? If you have found him, you have found the favor and the provision from God. New season, new you. And I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses in the scripture. Philippians 4.19. My God will use his glorious riches to give you everything you need. Oh, you didn't hear me. My God, because I have his presence, and I have his promise, and I have his peace, and I have his power, and I also have his provision, my God will use his glorious riches to give you everything you need. He will do this through Christ Jesus. If you could just get this in your spirit, everything will change. Let's make a declaration. I love declarations. And Job 22 is one of my favorite verses. I have a lot of favorite verses if you haven't recognized it. But one of my favorite verses is in Job 22 where he says that we should declare a thing and it will be established for us. And according to Job 22, verse 27 and 28, he said, I have made my prayer to you. You have heard me. I am walking in your obedience, walking in obedience to your word. 
And then the declaration goes on like this. I declare, say it with me, your presence, your promise, your peace, your power, your provision over my life in 2016, according to your word, it will be established. Declare a thing and it will be established. Say it with me again. I declare your presence, your promise, your peace, your power, your provision over my life in 2016. According to your word, it will be established. I believe it. I declare it. We receive it in faith in 2016. New season, new you. New season, new you. Could you just lift your hand to him right now? And as you made that declaration, begin to praise him right now. Begin to thank him. Father, we bless you. We thank you for a new season. I thank you for new people, for, trans, for a transition, for a transformation, for your anointing that changes us. Father, we thank you. We praise you right now. We bless you as the King. We bless you as the Lord. We thank you because this is the year of love. We thank you for your love. We thank you for sending your Son. We thank you, Lord, that everything changes. That we went to sleep as one person, but we have awakened as somebody else. And it is a new season. And we are new people, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you. We thank you, mighty God, for all you've done. And Lord, I pray for every person here. I pray that they would walk it out in 2016. I pray, God, that these verses from Daniel and these verses we've shared would get in every person's spirit that is here. Don't let any of us leave like we came. But Lord, this is the day. Just like Daniel said, on the first month, on the 24th day, you touched him. Father, we declare and receive in faith that on this first month in January, this 24th day of this month, that you are touching us and that we are transitioning, that we are changing. It is a new season. And it's a new me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. I declare and decree that the things that you've battled in the past, you will not battle this year. The things that have pulled you down and knocked you off course will not pull you down and will not knock you off course this year. The temptations that have overcome you in the past will not overcome you this year. The battles of lack that you have had in the past you will not have in 2016. The sicknesses that you have dealt with in the past you will not deal with them this year. You walk in healing. You walk in favor. You walk in increase. You walk in the blessings that God has intended for you. Thank you, Lord, because you have his presence. You have his promise. You have his peace. You have his power. You have his provision. He sent his son so that every one of these could manifest in your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.